There we go. Sorry, there was a fly. <laughs> I was having a chase about before we started. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Morning Bible. Wonderful, as always, to have you. Um, we are finishing off Luke chapter 21 today um, and getting ready for what's to come in Luke chapter 22. So 22 is where um, we really see things kick it up a gear. Um, it's where the plot to sort of betray Jesus comes in. Uh, it's where the disciples have the Last Supper together, so we're really heading towards Jesus' final uh, moments now. Um, but before we get to that, we've got the rest of 21 to go through. Now, 21 so far has been a lot about um, sort of what is to come, the destruction that is to come. Um, Jesus promises good things, he promises that he's going to be coming in a cloud, he promises that he will uh, protect us, that not a hair on our head will be harmed if we stick by him, if we hold our faith through persecution and difficult times. Um, but that doesn't mean that life will be easy. Um, and especially towards the end of days, towards the second coming, um, the world is going to start to fall apart a bit. And so this final passage that we're looking at today <clears throat> just kind of summarizes all of that um, and gives us Jesus' sort of final words, final thoughts on all of that kind of thing. So let's jump into it. <clears throat> we're going from um, verse 29. Uh, this is the lesson of the fig tree. It says, And Jesus told them a parable. It's a very short parable, but it's a parable. He told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So that's it. That's the extent of that metaphor that Jesus is using. Um, so remember yesterday we finished off talking about how um, Jesus is going to be coming on a cloud. Um, the whole heavens, all of the stars, the sky, the sun and the moon are all going to change. Um, there's going to be a big upheaval in everything, in the seas. Um, everything is going to point to Jesus and then he's going to come on a cloud. Um, and so, so that's what he's saying here with this fig tree analogy. He's saying, um, look, when you look at a fig tree and it comes out in leaf, you know that summer's near because fig trees only do that when it's summertime. So he's saying it'll be the same thing. He says, uh, so also, when you see these things take place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So he ends with this guarantee saying that his words will not pass away. Um, while all of the things around us, the kingdoms, the cities, um, even sort of the, the world itself, um, all of these things will be broken up, will pass away eventually, will change, um, there's nothing permanent. Jesus promises that his words will not pass away. Um, the teachings that he gives, uh, the, the way he works in people's lives, that is a permanent fixture. That isn't something that's going to be washed away with time. It's something that stays resolute throughout generations. Um, and so I think we need to, there's always um, a weakness, I think, that the church can sometimes fall into where we sort of dismiss um, certain parts of teaching, certain parts of the Bible as being, oh, well, that, that was the context of the time, so that's why it's this way. Context is massively important to understand sort of the intentions behind teachings, but that doesn't mean because we're in a different context now, the teachings go out the window. And so that's kind of what Jesus is saying. He's saying his words will not pass away. The things he's saying won't be washed away with time. So we need to stick to his teachings. Um, so let's go on. He kind of goes on. Um, to give us a warning about that, but also some encouragement at the end. He says, uh, from verse 34, But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day comes upon you suddenly like a trap. So that day, the way he says that day, that's the day of judgment. That's the day where Jesus comes again. Um, and he's saying, be careful that that day doesn't arrive when you're not prepared for it. It doesn't arrive like a trap. It doesn't catch you out. You need to be living a righteous life every day until we reach that point. You can't, you know, you, you shouldn't have sort of days off, periods off where you're like, oh, I can sort of lay my morals aside a bit and do what I want and then I'll come back um, to church, come back to God, come back to prayer, my Bible um, later on. I'll, I'll put that off and I'll come back to that later. Jesus is saying, don't do that because otherwise the, the final days, the days of judgment are going to come on you like that and you're not going to realise it. You're suddenly going to be caught out um, and you won't be, you won't have your heart in the right place. He warns especially about being weighed down by dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life. So drunkenness is obviously 
um, referring to drunkenness in the sense of having too much alcohol, but I think it also extends wider to sort of just overindulgence in general. It's Jesus saying, don't be so caught up in the things of this world that be, you become drunk from them all. Um, don't be weighed down by cares of this life. Um, the passage that we just looked at right before is saying, you know, everything will pass away. Everything in the world will pass away, but Jesus' words will stay forever. And so if you get weighed down with the things of this world, then those things will pass away too. Um, so don't be weighed down by these things. Watch yourselves. It's something you have to be alert for. Um, the fact that he says watch yourselves as well kind of makes me think that um, this isn't something that you... Well, it is, it is something you actively pursue a lot of the time, but it's something that you slip into. It's something that you don't necessarily realise until it's too late sometimes. You can fall into bad ways, fall into bad habits. Um, and so Jesus is saying, watch yourself, be alert for that, be ready to catch that um, before it happens. He says, for the day will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth. Um, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. So he's saying, look, this, this final day of judgment isn't just going to come for something, it's going to come for everything on the face of the earth. Everything's going to be involved, everything's going to be caught up in this. Um, and so don't, don't think you can escape, don't think you can hide from it, but face up to it, be strong. Um, he says, stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. So Jesus is telling us to pray for two things. He's telling us to pray for strength, to sort of stand up, um, not, so, not stand up, that's the second thing. His prayer number one is that we have strength um, to escape all of the things that are going to take place, all of the tumult, all of the difficulties, the wars, um, interrogation. He's praying, he tells us to pray for strength that we may get away from these things, that we won't be caught up in them, that we won't be pulled down in them. Um, but then the interesting thing to me is he says, um, you also have to pray for strength to stand before the Son of Man. Um, it takes strength to stand before Jesus sometimes. It can take real strength. Um, and that doesn't mean strength of, you know, I've done a million good deeds in my life, so I'm a great person, so I can stand before Jesus proudly. It's, it's the strength to come before Jesus as you are. It's the strength to be completely open and completely honest with him, to stand up and just, here I am, Lord, um, as I am. I think that's the strength that Jesus is telling us that we need to pray for. And um, that requires a real examination of your own heart and a real examination of your own integrity uh, to see where you are in your walk with faith. Um, and to have the strength to actually bring that before God and come before God in that sense and ask him to help you where you are. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the end of his teachings in this one. Uh, verse 37 just sort of wraps up what happens where Jesus goes after this. It says, and every day he was teaching in the temple. So he's still in the temple giving all these teachings. But at night he went out and lodged on the mount called Olivet. And early in the morning, all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. So this is Jesus' lifestyle at the moment. He will teach in the temple by day, and by night he will go and sleep uh, on the Mount of Olives. Um, my translation calls it the Mount called Olivet, but the Mount of Olives, that's where Jesus is sort of staying, he's lodging. Um, and all of the people are coming to him every day to hear his word, and he's causing a bigger and bigger stir, I guess, with all of these things. Especially when he starts talking about the end of the world and things like that. That's quite a big, quite a big teaching to be delivering, you know. And so I imagine he was causing quite a big stir with that. Um, so that's the end of uh, chapter 21. It's obviously, like I said, look, there's 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 some heavy stuff in there. There's some heavy stuff because, you know, hearing that the world is going to be through this massive time of uh, turmoil and upheaval is difficult, that's scary and that's hard, but the passage actually has loads of promises throughout it, promises and that not a hair on our head will be harmed, promises that Jesus will come and if we stand before him he will welcome us. Um, it promises that um, if we pray to the Lord he'll give us strength and he can give us deliverance from hardships, from difficulties. Um, and it, yeah, it starts off with Jesus saying, do not be terrified. Do not be afraid. Don't be scared of the things that are to come. Um, so yeah, there's, it's tough, but obviously there's hope and there's goodness through it. And actually, in these final days, in these final judgments, that's when God is going to sort of bring the justice um, so that his kingdom can be built on top of that, so that the new heaven and new earth can be built on the back of um, what, has, what has come before. Um, so yeah, make sure your hearts are prepared.
don't take sort of days off, don't take weeks off being a good person, um, being a faithful servant to God, um, press into him every single day, work hard every single day, um, and yeah, come to Jesus as you are. Um, good lessons, good lessons in there. So yeah, um, from tomorrow we are going to be going into narrative sort of, which follows Jesus um, essentially coming to the cross. Um, is where it all starts to build and all starts to um, tell of his death and then spoilers his resurrection. So very, very exciting. But for now, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye bye bye.